everybody. So welcome back to our podcast. Um, today I have a special guest because Jessica is on vacation. Um, last week's podcast was pre-recorded, so she was actually on vacation then, but whatever. Neither here nor there. Today we have Erica. Yay! Yay! <laughs> it's an improvement, but it's fine. Oh, oh. <laughs> Throwing shade it's, right it's away. Nothing. <laughs> Just nothing. <laughs> So um, Eric and I are both coaches, so I thought today might be kind of fun for us to talk a little bit about coaching and how it changed our outlook on life or how it changed our views on other people, just how it changed us, mm -hmm. what coaching is all about. So tell everybody a little bit about yourself so they know you. So I... Yep. So um, <laughs> I have been writing since I was six years old and I've been competing... Well, I was competing quite heavily until I was about 20. I did the PCI Nationals oh. when I was 18. Um, and then my Clyde Cross that I rode, she sort of retired from that. And I've got two young horses who are great, but I couldn't take them out. So I haven't been competing for a long time because um, I couldn't stay on because they kept fucking me off. So, um, yeah. they're finally ready, and I, um, I'd like to start competing. Again? In, yeah, like elementary level, that sort of thing. Are you doing, like, are you thinking, oh, I'm going to go into EA, or are you thinking, oh, I'm going to go into HRCAB? Yeah. Whoa, she's going all the way, like, deep sauce. Yeah. You're going all the way in. Well, yeah, I, okay, I think because HRCAB... It, I'm a really competitive person. Yeah, yeah. Um, at HRC, because I'd like to do the dressage festival and that sort of thing. Oh, me too. So, but I, I'm actually thinking about doing showing HRC. Oh, girl, we're yeah. gonna do this together. Oh, just yeah. so you guys know, listening wise, um, I'm gonna call this a cozy cast because we are cozy casting today. Yes. We're both wearing these very luxurious robes. <laughs> But very fancy. I know. It feels like we're in yeah. a smoking room. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But they're just, it's because it was raining today. I had a competition. I got soaked all the way to my undergarments. It was very unpleasant. Um, I got a new pair of Petri boots. They got soaked. Aren't they nice? Apparently, that's the best way to break tall boots in, though. Really? Get them soaking wet? Yeah. And cry. Yeah, well,. I was like riding around and I was like, Tim, there's something touching the back of my leg. Can you like take a look at it? And he's like, which leg? And I'm like, both. And he's like, I'm pretty sure it's your boots. And I was like, no, no, no. Can you yeah. please take a look for me? And he like walks into the yeah. arena and he's like, yeah, honey, it's your boots. That's your boot. I am just, I'm sorry, but I'm very excited about this. Yeah. When I was 21, my mum bought me um, uh, custom made tall boots. Here's the oh, problem. Is yeah. When they came, I have gained a little bit. Yeah. And so it took me two years and now I can fit into them. Except I just got a new saddle and the saddle doesn't fit with my boots. And so I had to get the saddle fit around. But now they're fine. Now Why did the them. saddle not fit with the boots? The saddle didn't fit the horse? No, the saddle fit the horse, but my boots, because I've got such short legs, they made my legs shorter. Yeah. And I had such issues with it. But now I wear them at home, just riding by myself. Oh, I love them. Yeah. So I've been wearing Ariats, not yeah. sponsored by Ariat. Um, I have been wearing Ariats since I was probably about 10. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I've been wearing yeah. them for donkey's years. Yeah. And, um, and so I had, I've had four sets of Ariat tall boots over my lifetime. Because when I was driving carriage, we had to wear tall oh, boots. Oh, yeah. So I just burned through tall oh. boots every year. Yeah. I was like, yep, that's 500 bucks, <laughs> you know. Oh. So, um... Going to Petrie and getting a pair of Petrie boots, I was like, mm, I don't know, am I going to love you? Yeah. And I wore them around last night. I wore them riding yesterday, and I'm like, I can't feel my feet. Mm -hmm. I cannot feel anything. I don't know where my stirrups yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you think it's the same as gaiters. It is not the same. No. no, and the sole is so hard. Yeah. And I made a little bad joke obviously because they're from Germany and the soles are really hard so when I walk around in them it sounds very you know world war -y, no we get not it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. um <laughs> and so and so I was like these boys I don't know if it's just because like yeah. I'm not used to this but it's hard hard work 
or as we say in Australia. Now I'm really hard into hard 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 that. But really, hard. I say it all the time right now. It's my co favorite colloquialism of the week. Hard yaka, and and not for sheep stations, not playing for sheep stations. That's another one that I have been yeah. using this month. What does that mean? Like it's not, you're not like, you're not gambling with big heavy chips. Oh, you know. Look, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm a very white person. That's okay. Just, oh, that's so Excuse me, doggy. This is not what is allowed. Oh my god, I love that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, yeah. what, what, when did you start coaching? Yeah, so I started, um, probably when I was about 19. Yeah? I started doing my coaching certificates with my coach who was helping me. I'm going to move the dog. Dog, come here. Um, and I, so I've got my intro level NCIS. Yep. Um, which was way harder than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. And now I'm doing my level one. I'm like, I've got two lessons left for my assessments. Yeah. So I'm really close to doing to finish them up. Speaking of that, I have to talk to you about that assessments and stuff, and put you in touch with somebody. Oh my gosh! This. Yes, yes, oh, yes. Of course. Completely forgot about that. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. we are going to do that. That's a real shame that that got cancelled. I know, but that would have been good. Yeah, we're going to do that. Um, the before in next month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. Um, and so you, when you started coaching, yeah. how do you think it, like, what did it do for you? Interesting, because when I, as a writer, mm -hmm. um, I was always, okay, this sounds really bad, but I went to Pony Club, right? Yeah. And I was the grade one writer. No one else was grade one. I was, in hindsight, not that good, but I was the highest level writer they had. And then I went to nationals and I was like, I'm such a great writer, why can't I, I'll be a great coach. And then it turned out I was a shocking coach, like genuinely so bad because I don't think in words, I think in just the way I ride's quite automatic. Yeah. And so to describe how to do a travers or how to do a shoulder in, I was like, you just do it. And then they'd be like, but why do you do it? And I was like, because it's in the test. Like, I just had no yeah. depth of knowledge, and so I had to, I think being a coach actually made me a way better rider, because I, ne I never even thought about why do you do a shoulder in, I just did it because it was in the dressage test, and so, um, but I'm really grateful that I did that, because even if I don't do coaching for the rest of my life, it helped, um, because as a learner, I'm a little bit like, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it's a bit like, if one plus one equals two, right? Then I'm like, but what does the one mean? And then what does the other one mean? But then what does the two mean? What if we add three? What if we, so I get a bit yeah. sort of like, what if you do this? What if this happens? But yeah. then what, what, what happens if you add sub this in? And so like, it's yeah. good as a coach because you can sort of go, um, it's a real like, you've got to know a lot of stuff just for that one simple exercise. Because yeah. if the if the student asks you, well, how come I've got to use my inside leg? Yeah. So I'll be like, on it. Yeah. And then you have to be able to say, use your inside leg for this, but you don't use your outside leg. Yeah. Like, you just have to have so much knowledge. Background. Yeah. In everything. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. And how one thing connects to another thing, and then that connects to another thing, and how they all connect together, which is how I am as a learner. So it was yeah. good. It was a good sort of learning experience, and it really helped my writing. See, for me, I was the opposite. Yeah. I've always been, like, not the best rider. Yeah. I've never been the best rider. Like, look at my ribbons. None of them say first. <laughs> You've got ginger ribbons, so, like... <laughs> yeah. Well, that, those, are, those were pretty flashy ones to get, I think. Like, yeah. for Bonio. Mm. That was the Bonio Winter CDI. Like, I felt pretty good getting a five. Um, but, but I'm never, like, number one. Mm, yeah, you know? no. And, and I, I never was a great, great, like, I wasn't like, yeah, I'm the best at this. And, mm -hmm. and my coaching, and I, and I don't do, I don't ride by a feel. Like, I try, mm -hmm. but I have to know how it works to make it work. Yeah. And a lot of my students hear me say that. Yeah, yeah. And then we sit there and go, how does the walk work? How many beats are in the walk? How do the legs work in the walk? How do you make yeah. the walk work for you? Yeah. 
and and because I didn't grow up with natural feel, I I explain everything really yeah. in depth, and my theory is really good. You're a good, like a good coach, I think. Thank you. So, but I think I didn't grow up with natural feel, and my coach says this all the time. I can go into a lesson, mm -hmm. and I just go into this trance where I'll just do whatever you tell me to do, like. I'm a very good student. And then right. at the end of the lesson, my mum would say, so what did you do? And I'd be like, I can't tell you. Because like, I just, like I just go into this weird stage where I just do what you want me to do and we get this amazing work out of my horse. And then I'm just like, well that's that. Like I just, I yeah, have no Yeah, you don't thought, take anything. Yeah, please. it wasn't natural feel. It was just me sort of following direction. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then it becomes a problem because people say, how does the walk work? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, you should know. <laughs> I have some excellent. So I take instruction from a couple of different coaches. Yeah. Um, and I I enjoy that because most of the time, mm. the three coaches that I get instruction from say the same thing in three different ways. Mm. Yeah. So then I'm going, oh, they're just telling me I have to go slower. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. just telling me you gotta yeah. slow that pony down. Yeah. You know, yeah. And then I try, and and Tim really makes me think about that. Tim's my husband, and everybody knows this at this point. But um, he really makes me think about it because when I go to a comp like today, he was like, "Sit back. Your hands look good, but you need to sit back. Every time you tilt your head down, you're looking down. You're tilting forward. You're going to end up over the handlebars. Sit back." Does Tim rock? No. But he's heard the same things yeah. out of all of my coaches. Yeah. It's good to have someone on the ground. And he know. knows, he can look at me and go, yeah, okay, she's doing this and this wrong. And he goes, so, you know, sometimes I'll just go, more leg. <laughs> you know, and I'll go, doesn't, doesn't fit here, that's but that's okay. <laughs> good work, good work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, a little slower. It's always a little slower. Yeah. Everything <laughs> has to be a little slower. A little bit slower. It's just got a list of phrases and it's just like, Inside rein, outside, like just random. Inside leg to outside brain connection, you know. <laughs> More you're doing, over the back. You're doing a free walk, like, yeah. and you're like, what about? No, no, I do my free walk, and he goes, mmm, horse stretches downward and long, long, lower and downward, whatever it says in the test. Because he's actually read the test, and he goes, that's really good. But I'm, my free walk is always a seven. I, I never get less than a seven for a free walk. Even I, retired a test because I was galloping. Yeah. And I still got a seven and a half for my free walk. <laughs> free walk was a strong point in my mm. test as well. Yeah. yeah. So neither here nor there. Um I think that understanding mm. and looking and observing, I have received so much from the other coaches around me. Yeah. Especially one of my coaches, I feel like she's just the coach's coach, you know? She, she says to me, why this, why this, why this? And then she'll go, how do those, like, how does that fit into what you're doing? Yeah. yeah like, yeah. so when you, like, control the shoulder around your circle, yeah. now you're going to change direction through the center. You're going to take two little half steps, but you're going to keep that shoulder right. And then how did that affect what you did? Yeah. Why did you do that? And I just love it because she gives me so much depth and mm -hmm. theory yeah. behind every action I do. And so I try and do that with all of my students yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point because I could never leave a lesson and replicate it um, during the week. Mm -hmm. And then when I started coaching, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. And I only just started um, when I did my coaching certificates, um, coming to my coach and saying, so this is what we worked on. It's not what we worked on the last lesson, but this is what came up, and she was like, oh, okay, good, we can work with that. Instead of just me going, yeah, it was fine, like, yeah. and having nothing to say. Yeah. Um, so it helped me in terms of my horses and that sort of thing, but I could actually ride with a... Um, Intent. Oh, word? Yeah, yeah, and instead of just going out there being like, let's just do the same exercise we did in the lesson, like, I can yeah. actually... Um, address issues and stuff without going, I don't know, oh, we didn't talk about this in my lesson. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, like, I had a lesson the other day, and everybody for the last little while has been really trying to get me to slow the pony down. And I'm trying to slow the pony down. Don't, don't, 
get me wrong here. I think he needs to slow down. I understand he needs to yeah, slow down. Yeah, you get it. But it's, it's really hard. <laughs> I'm the opposite, so there we go. So yeah, I'm going real fast. And, <laughs> and, and I'm constantly saying, wait, turn, bend, wait, turn, yeah. bend, wait. And, and I'm riding along. And so I got an exercise recently that was quite good, but it got banged into me like slower slower and it, she just kept getting into me slower until I was like is this PF <laughs> how slow am I yeah. keep him in front of your leg go slower <laughs> like oh my god I think I did that You're like what do you want from me <laughs> <laughs> no I loved it because it showed me how slow I can go yeah yeah you know and then when I went to the competition today I had only worked on going slow for the whole okay. week okay yeah go slow when I got to the competition today and he was like, I am sewing machine. And I was oh. like, please? No. And you're like, hey, remember that thing we talked about? <laughs> yeah, let's just bring it back. And so I tried, and for a little bit, he was like, mm, okay, a little slow. And I was like, cool. And he's like, oh, my friend showed up. And I was like, oh. No, no. Slash tests are tricky because um, you're trying to like keep it calm, and then they'll do something, and you're like, don't you dare. Up. And then the judge is looking, like staring at you and you're just like, it's fine, it's fine. No, I'm not angry. I'm not furious at my horse. It's fine. And you're trying to like control this beast while the judge is staring at you. You're like... Today, because it started to, the heavens opened. Firstly, I was an indoor, a little oh. indoor. And then I had to go out into the open heavens to do my oh. test. And he was like, why are we going out there? We don't ride outside in the rain, Mom. And I was like, I know we don't, dude, but come on. Yeah, like, you are. <laughs> I don't like it either. And he was like, okay, we're going out there. Dad's walking, so I'll, I'll just follow him. He loves he loves Tim. He'll just go anywhere that Tim goes. He follows him out there, and then he's like, this is terrible. We walk up. The windshield wipers are going on the little car. The, she opens the door, and he's like, I'm not going near that car. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the windscreen wipers. The, the worst. And the lights were on. The car was running. Oh, okay. And so I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. And it's bucketing with rain. I'm already soaked. I haven't even saluted. You know? Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm, my underpants are wet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I come in. I'm like, you know what? You can just go alpaca. But <laughs> as long as you go slow. And yeah. he's like, I'll go slow. A little bit alpaca. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. Deal. <laughs> and then we go along, and then he goes, oh, no, 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 why are we going towards the car? No, no, no. <laughs> going towards C, straight. I'm like, you just got to get to the C, and then turn left. And he's like, no, 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 which wipers and the lights and the motor, and I can't. And you're like, trying to pretend to be, like, in a good humor. And you're yeah. like, oh, my horse is so still. If you don't, I walk to the top of that. <laughs> That's another good thing. I sometimes go to competitions with um, clients. Yeah. And I'm trying to teach clients, you know, to have a cool head and because horses aren't sort of vindictive animals, they're yeah. genuinely, they're like toddlers. You yeah. know, you would not speak to a toddler the way you speak to a horse. No. You'd just be like, they can't control their emotions, that you've got to be in the now and just sort of ride what you feel. And um, I am constantly telling my students, that, like, don't look back at the jump that you just um, no. knocked over. Just stay in the now, relax, don't worry about it. When you leave the arena, you know, talk about it at the truck. Don't do it in front of everyone, all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I realized I do all those things all the time. Like, and I'm constantly trying to um, take my own advice, you mm -hmm. know, um, because sometimes, like, I'm, I'm, I have a very short temper. I right. Don't really need you and I in the ginger fever yeah. over here. And yeah, and um, I constantly try to tell my students, you know, keep it cool. Yeah, relax. Stop. It. I, I don't know. It, I'm not a very quick, very handsy, and I'm really working on it because I'm constantly telling my students, why are you hitting your horse? Why are you doing that? It's yeah. not. It's not helpful. No, it's, not, it's just. You're making their anxiety worse by making them more anxious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, and I can see it. When I see other people doing it, I'm like, oh, idiot. Yeah. What's this idiot doing? And then I... D I, I never, never get mad. I get afraid. And then I go... Sometimes I do. Yeah. You're okay. Please That's a really keep going. One. Yeah. <laughs> I get afraid and then I get, like, angry. And people think I'm being angry, but I'm like, no, I'm just... 
scared. Scared I'm gonna get I'm gonna fall off and take more take a thing coming. Yeah, my my anxiety on occasion will come out as anger, but not so much towards this particular horse. Because I don't like I'm not mad at him. He's yeah. trying and he he loves me and I love him. Yeah. Like if I leave him at the float at the comp and I come and I put my hand around he's like, "Ooh." Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it and because we are super connected in that way, yeah. I, when I ride him, I 100% in my head know that he is not trying to be bad. And none of them are. I know. Let's say it again for the people in the oh. back row. I truly believe that too. No yeah. horses are doing anything to spite you. They have a peanut for a brain. <laughs> they literally do. Like, <laughs> genuinely, they are not, they have no um, ability think that way. I no. I literally can't. They cannot. And and when people say to me, oh, oh Richard, he's being an asshole. Yeah. That's a big one. That's a big one. He's being cheeky. I call my pony cheeky Sometimes I do that too. But like, cheeky is different. Yeah, I'm trying, especially when um, the ponies are being a little bit difficult, you can see them getting a bit teary. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm like, oh, it's being a bit cheeky today, but I never say like, naughty or nasty or no. someone um i know who i um coach with quite a bit she always goes he's got a lot of dirt and i was like that is not helpful no <laughs> because then they get on and they're really aggressive yeah yeah i don't promote aggressive riding no. and and dirty horses should be ridden by tactful riders until they are suitable yeah for a rider that's not yeah. so tactful I have seen some very beautiful tactful riding recently. Yeah. And I just wish that, you know, I could go up to those people and be like, <laughs> you, you win the prize for the most unfazed by the fact that your horse had a meltdown. Yeah. You were like, yep, continuing along in the warm up, not in the dress, not being watched by a judge. <laughs> you are yeah. in the warm up. Your horse just went, whoa, 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 whoa. And you just sat there like you were just having a good time. And then you continued on with your canter. And then your canter work was beautiful because there was lots of expression. <laughs> you know? I have a friend like that. Shout out to Amy Vinadal. And she's just like, she's like the most deadpan rider I've ever seen. One time, I wasn't there, but she told me. Mm -hmm. She rides one of our ponies who's a little bit, um, she's got a personality. Yeah. And she, um somehow ended up in a ditch and I, I think it was from Amy was trying to get more out of her or something like that and she gave a tap with the whip and she pivoted landed in the ditch and Amy just went she didn't even get off she just went you just get up if you want but if you don't that's fine and she just <laughs> sat there until this pony got out of the ditch and then she just like anyway and I was like I you well, have to be special I don't know how she does it but sometimes when, before I get on my horse and I have to go out into cross country yeah. schooling, I think, be like Amy, be deadpan, you're fine. I never do. I can never do it. You know, what just, that would have done me well today. Because thinking back, you know, hindsight, it's beautiful. You know, 2020. Um, but I was looking back on today and I said to myself, you know what? That test would have been better if you stopped yeah. thinking it was so bad. Yeah. Because other people watch it and go, that was beautiful. And I go, everything was bad. Everything yeah, was yeah, terrible. Yeah. Everything was alpaca. Everything yeah. was really hard. And he was just whatnot. Going. I need to just go, great. We're going here. We're doing yeah, this. Yeah. You know, and just chill the F out. You just, like, and I've become better at it, but you sort of just go, A, enter and body trot. That was awful. But anyway, um, C, turn left. Oh, that was a bit weird. What's next? Like, yeah, yeah. Just been like, Oh God, this is awful. But I, don't know, I haven't done a test for so long, but I used to be quite good at it, mm -hmm. but I didn't have a, um, my horse was pretty good until I got a bronc. So the last dress I just test I did, yeah, um, I nearly fell off. And I don't think people fall off in dressage. Very close. Very close. Ooh. So, but I'm ready to go out there again, I think. Yeah. 
part for well, my back. Well, you let me know because there's a couple of HRCAV shows that I'm going to do next year. Yeah. I'll just let you know what yeah. I'm doing. I'm going to stick in HRCAV for a little bit because I had a couple of thank you. I will I will let you just have a little break. Bye. You know, um, and we're galloping and I can't stop and stop. Oh. Retire. Walk out of the long oh, I'm never retired. Train wreck. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You know, if I ride a test and I feel like it's going to be less than 55, I am retiring. <laughs> no amount of excellent long rain walk is going to save me. <laughs> Don't worry. I know I've done the test, but I'll just do another free rain walk. You can just write it down in the comments below, like 10. 10, 10 yeah. you know, free rain walk. Yeah. It's really good. Um, yeah, so I, I have retired, because, partially because I don't want to sacrifice my training. That is actually a really good point um, because I find in EA and also HRCAV, it's all the same. Um, so I ride classical dressage. Cool, cool. But I'm a competitor. So yeah, yeah. it's a bit of a conundrum. But um, none of the judges that I ride in front of are really that appreciative of it, if that makes sense. And so the writing that I have to do after a test is different than the writing that I usually do, which doesn't make sense no. to my horse, obviously. No. It would be like trying to do a Western yeah. test Why? or whatever. They don't understand it. And so I, um, I find it difficult to sort of reconcile that in my mind because I don't want to ride the way the dressage judges want me to ride. So... Um, that's a tricky one as well. Why don't you just ride more classical in your test? I do, yeah. Then but there's yeah. a lot of... I don't I don't do that well. But um, I just don't get very good marks for it. Which is... Why? What do you though. think... What do you think the marks are... Like, why do you think the marks are bad? What what kind of commentary do you Okay, I don't place very well. Yeah, okay. But, which is a different thing. But... I, also, I ride with really high hands, which is actually a problem, but they're always like, uh, why are your hands so high? Question mark, question mark, right. question mark. Yeah. Can you just put like, legite or yeah. whatever it is? What's that? With that? Legite. Legite. Yeah, I should just go in and they're like, what's your number? And I'm like, let me just tell you before I start, my hands are going to be high. I know it. Don't ride it. Legite. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I... I... I don't know anything. I shouldn't. I shouldn't call out legite. It's alright. I don't know anything about it. It's a lot of fun. I would think of myself as a little bit more on the classical scale. Mm. Like, like if classical scale is liberals versus conservatives, we're gonna call the classicals liberals. Yeah. And the regular, more. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. We're gonna call them conservatives. I'm still like. You know, I vote liberal most of the time, but when it comes to certain topics, I vote a little bit. Well, that's, yeah, it's a bit of a problem for me because when I started coaching, yeah. because I sort of, I do a lot of biomechanics as well. Yeah. So, and I can't tell you all the muscle names. I really should be able to, but I have a fairly good idea of how the body works and how that sort of thing. And especially in the leisure day, which is just another, it's a school of, it's a classical riding school, so legerté is not an actual like type of riding. It's just like it's like an adult riders of oh of classical dressage. So so it's like a club, basically cool yeah. kids club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but not like, what's up with the happy high hands? Okay, well, I you see that in all the time trying, in just in that little club. Yeah, because um, the theory is is that you follow the contact wherever it goes. And if the horse's head is high, then your hands have to be high. Here's the problem, is that I never put my hands down because I, I just like riding like this. Which is the wrong Lucky thing Lucky army do. or bendy elbowy? Bend, bend. Like T-Rexy? Like, so the wrists are a little bit whoopy whoop? Oh dear. Honestly, it's all a bit of everything. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very expressive all over the place. Lots of elbows yeah. and And theoretically, wrists. you're supposed to, once the horse sort of relaxes into the contact, you're supposed to keep your hand forward, but I never do. Man, I am the ultimate. Like my my coaches would be like, 
don't give too much. You're sacrificing your seat. I'm like, here, take, I'm my darling. Good. You are being good. <laughs> you know? And then my whole seat just goes, <laughs> and then my horse goes, ooh, I can pull. <laughs> That's don't. funny that you say that because last clinic I had a, for the leisure tie thing, um, she was talking to me and she said, you need to put your hands forward. I can't. Ooh. I actually can't. And she was like, that's because you've got short arms. Yes, yes. Right? And I was like, And then you yeah. end up... Yeah. And I was like, I feel like I'm leaning forward. And I already leaned forward. Yeah. And a lady from the audience was like, she's like a T-Rex. Uh, right? Oh, my Hilarious. God. Hilarious. But, like, I knew her. She was like... Okay. Okay. And so then I went to work and I told them about it. And now they call me Rexy because um, I've got very short arms. So, I mean... That's how I ride. Short arms. I like to. I like to carry them. But so I, as most people know, mm. was a carriage driver for twelve years. Mm -hmm. And if any sport can make you handsy McHands pants, oh yeah, it is carriage driving. Oh. This is how Eric and I actually first met. Was I was teaching some carriage driving, and yes. then we met again when I was coaching at. Dandy Ranges. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes. That was actually the best. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I highly recommend. Um, yeah, so if anybody needs carriage driving lessons, we still I do that. I actually do it's need some because I that's have fun. not got into my pony's cart since last time. It scares me. Well, we gotta get on that. Yeah. I'll just come to your place and help me. Um, <laughs> Please. And, uh, well, I mean, I, I drive. I, on the ground for a lot of my clients, they want they're like, oh, can you like long ride my horse? And I'm like, yeah, I can long ride anything. Sure. It doesn't know how to long ride, and they're like, I don't think so. And I'm like, sure, I'll teach it. Yeah. <laughs> Five minutes later, it's like, Dan and I look at yeah. me turning on the like he can turn on the forehand now. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Running my butt off yeah. around him. Look at this. Look at this. Now we'll turn on the quarters. Yeah. Nah, 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 like running around and so. One of my favorite things to do as a coach is to just be like, can I get on? And then you just get on, and you just do some really cool stuff, and they're like, wow. They're like, anyway, so on you get. And like, I just really like hopping on, being like, here's a helmet that I just casually brought, and here's my top boots. Sometimes I teach you my top boots. And um, just have a little ride on their, on their horses. So I specialize predominantly in ponies. Mm. I can teach a lot of ponies, I ride a lot of ponies, I teach a lot of competitive ponies, and stuff like that. And recently I've been riding more ponies and so I've got my horse who's excellent mm -hmm. and then I've got a client's horse that's for sale mm -hmm. her name is Giggle have you seen her have you missed Gig? well I'm gonna take her to Randall Park uh, uh, maybe I'll... she's a little chestnut mare she's oh, lovely she's a riding horse. pony Giggle <laughs> she's jumped up to a meter without a mooten like she's 14 hands excellent cheap cheap <laughs> um and so I've been riding her, and then I'm also riding another client's pony because the little girl broke, well, we thought she broke her arm, and then she didn't break her arm, and blah, blah, blah. But I started riding this pony on a trampoline. She almost broke her arm on the trampoline, oh. not on the pony. Yeah. So I started riding this pony, and I've known him for quite some time. Mm. And I started riding him, and I was like, I go a little bit of bend, and he goes, and now I turn. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I forget that yeah. kids just steer with their hands and yeah. stop with their hands. And I'm like, Okay, 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 okay. We got yeah. one month to get this on lock, buds. Okay, we're gonna get this. We, yeah. we do a little bendy. I control your wither, and then in a month of me riding him twice a week, I could get him to turn like almost a walk pirouette. We almost got our walk pirouette. Yeah. He could like he was, everything was like in a rhythm. Everything mm -hmm. was slow and steady, and he stopped when I asked him to stop, mm -hmm. which he wasn't doing. <laughs> and um. And then the little girl got on, and she was just like, this is fun. And I was like, great. I'm so glad that I made something fun. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't think it was fun previously. Mm, yeah. When you don't have turn, bend, stop, go, and back up, what have you got? A wild beast that's taking you on an adventure. Uh, I work um, in a riding school. Mm -hmm. um, really good riding school, quite, I like, I really like it, but school horses are not the most schooled horses I've ever no. worked with, and so I've been teaching people how to get the horse going at the start of the lesson so that they don't have to sort of like kick, kick, kick all the time, because yeah. they don't, then they can't, you can't do anything. No. And people are acting like I'm some sort of, you know, 
profit because they're like, we, we, I have never done this much in a lesson before. I've never, and you're like, well, I just, I mean, this is the problem. We need to work on the problem and move on with our lives. But they don't, um, they just accept this sort of like mediocre, boring lesson. And I don't, I don't get that. But um, I think some people buy horses too early too. And some people don't get out of the riding schools early enough. Mm. Like, the the proper sequence of things should be go to a riding school, get lessons for a year. However long it takes you to walk, trot, and canter comfortably. Yeah. You know, have a, have a jump here and there. Once you're feeling comfortable with your horsemanship, your ability to tack up, untack, yeah. move on, get your own horse. That's an interesting one because um, I... Kids who have their own horses are always a little bit better. Like, they've got better balance, they've got all that sort of thing. And I didn't really know why, apart from the lessons and that sort of thing, obviously. But I started riding the school horses. And I was like, they do. you can't sit to the trot. I understand that. I can't sit to the trot. Like, yeah. you can't sit in the saddle in the canter. This is the most awful canter I've ever sat on. I'm yeah. sorry, but this horse, is, he's, he's just like an old, retired horse and we can't expect that much from him yeah fair enough and it's hard to teach and it's hard to learn on a horse that you can't do specific things on because they're so unbalanced or so whatever and um it, i think it, yeah it is beneficial to sort of branch out into your own sort of thing because it does make you better and it's mm -hmm. easier to it's ride easier. Like, and i was shocked because sometimes i'll be like I remember one time I could not teach this guy how to sit in the canter. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's not that hard. Open your hip flexor soft and yeah. don't pitch with your knees. You know, and all the things like that Like four lessons we had, of, I was very, very detailed. Yes. And then I was like, do you know what, I'm just going to get on. And so I got on and I could not for the life of me mm. canter this whole, like I could not do it. And it was a good sort of lesson to sort of go... It's not always exactly what it looks like. Yeah. Um, and if it, if I have to do four lessons and I still think it's not good enough, then I need to sort of, not admit defeat, but sort of be like, what you're doing isn't working. What what am I doing wrong? Yeah, exactly. That's always a good question. What am I doing what wrong? I doing wrong? Which is a good, I learned that um, when I started coaching, I was spent more time around coaches. Mm -hmm. And a really interesting thing that people say is like, oh, I've got this guy who can't sit to the trot he's awful or like this girl she cannot get on like she's just like yeah. she's the worst at mounting i'm like but you're the coach like she doesn't know if you don't mention it it's yeah. our responsibility as coaches if you're not happy with what you're saying you have got to Fix be the it. one that says it yeah. yeah like you can't blame students for things yeah. if you like it's your own see like i have problems sometimes with going to especially like new clients and things like that going to a client's house and then looking at their situation and i think to myself you should still be in a riding school yeah like if you don't know how to mount up if you don't know how to walk and trot mm. if you like i don't mind fine tuning things but if you really oh yeah like you don't know what rising is yeah, yeah like you gotta go back to the riding school yeah. and i think some people get a horse when they shouldn't mm -hmm. that aren't ready and then i think some people wait too long to leave the riding school mm. like i don't want to be at a riding school and want to do shoulder and rather. you're not going to get it out of it yeah. No, you're not going to get it out of your schoolmasters. Yeah. You just won't. I have actually taught a lesson where they said, yeah, we do shouldering on these horses. And I was like, okay, what you're doing there is not shouldering, but I appreciate that. And Give then, effort. Almost. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's unfair to expect a horse to try and do those kinds of things when he, in, when he never does in the first place. Yeah. And I feel really uneasy about it when, um, like, my boss will say, yeah, no, work them hard. Like, but why would you? Because they don't work like that. During the week, they've got, let's say, 15 lessons a week per horse. Let's say. Yeah, yeah. And for 15 hours, they don't work that way. I don't think it's fair to treat a horse... Differently. 
Yeah, yeah, just because I'm the one who's qualified enough to teach a Trevor or a Shouldering or whatever. Yeah. I just, uh, no, I don't feel like that's fair, to be honest. No. So, but I have been, I have, I try and avoid it, but, you know, sometimes they get a bit. But another interesting thing is sometimes people will be like, I've, yeah, I've been at this riding school for six years. And I'm like, cool, do you want to just pop the bridle on? And they're like, I don't know how to do that. Like, Who has been teaching you? And or, why haven't you been, why haven't you said, hey, let me learn how to do that? Or, I just, sometimes it mm -hmm. shocks me how little people know when they've been there for so long. Yeah. And, and it's not that it's their fault. I'm also like, Someone needs to teach these people. Yeah. It takes time, I get that. But yeah. I remember once I did 45 minute lessons and she uh, didn't know how to put the bridle on. It took us half an hour for her to be able to put the bridle on for me to feel comfortable enough. Yeah. And she had a 15 minute riding session. By yeah. the next day, she had the bridle on before I came over. So I was like, Ta da! Yeah, like, sure, we didn't get enough riding time. And her mum actually did talk about it. But I was like, I'm not, I'm not, this is what she needed to learn. Like, yes. it's not all about the time in the saddle. Not for 45 minutes or 40 minutes. Yeah. You know, but sometimes when I get irritated with people, I'm like, no, I'm the one who needs to be teaching. I need to address that if it's yes. annoying me. Yeah. Which. But it's tough, like, when I, especially when I'm looking at situations where, where, I feel like there's a lack of knowledge to the point where I'm like, okay, this is deep. Like, yeah, this is there's a difference between stop, 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 you're going to die. And yeah. the difference between, oh my God, that girl cannot get on. Everything else is fine. Yeah. But she's an idiot. Like, but like even, even the understanding horse mentality, like dare, dare I digress to, yeah. to, to my horse is not vindictive. My horse understanding that horses are prey animals and they function in a different capacity yeah. understanding that if the horse is moving around at the tie-ups it's not trying to hit you but it's also oh not respecting gosh. your space and we need to address it we need to work on your horse's ground manners and you understanding how to deal with this i have a big issue sometimes with um Students who just sort of are like, oh, oh, and they get out of the horse's oh, way. He's just, oh, he's just knocked me over. That's the one thing that will really make me lose my temper, and I try and work on it because the horse is only as good as his, yeah, the handlers. But yesterday we've got this grazing muzzle on a pony of ours because he yeah. handles, he's yeah. sort, of, he sort of got one now, and he hates it, and he yeah. bashed me with it on the mouth, on that face yesterday. Really? Oh, and I just. And I, I literally, I had to just be like, you need to stop, like, calm down, because he hates it. It's not his fault. He wants to eat the grass. Like, he hasn't had grass for months, mm -hmm. and I just need to be like, but also, we need to address that, because he's done it at least three times. So, yeah. there's a difference between lashing out in anger, and then sort of, and a difference between addressing an issue. Being firm, but fair. Yeah. And I'm very, like, I'm quite often, more often than I'd like, I lash out in a temper instead of yeah. instead of like an educational yeah. firmness. Yeah, which this I'm is really important. trying to teach kids. Mm -hmm. um, and it's difficult because kids have the emotional capacity as horses, uh, yeah. of, of horses, so yeah. it's hard to explain. And I can't do it, so how can I, how can I explain that to a 10 year old who's, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I think so too. I, yeah. Another thing that coaching really taught me is the different ways that people learn. Yeah. And, and how many different ways I can communicate anything to make the same result. Mm -hmm. And I think that's all, that's all that being a better coach than someone else is. Yeah. Is how many different ways can you explain that? Yeah. That's what makes you a better coach. How yeah. many, how many different ways can you tell a person to sit back? You know, yeah. turn your tailbone underneath you. Yeah. Bring your shoulders back. Pick your head up. You know, but draw that from you a your core. Rider or coach as well, because you have to know those things. How many different ways can you yeah. see the cat? That and sometimes I've been with my coach since I was six, 
Oh cute, that's long. Um, but I've been to other coaches and sometimes they'll say something and it's just empty words. And this has really spurred me as a coach because there's a lot of, um, let's, let's just say inside right now, no what is it, inside leg to outside hand. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. So, um, apart from the fact that Legite never does that. Um, so are we saying that Legite is the style of riding or a club? <laughs> Oh, sorry. Uh, it's a club, but um, it's a style of riding. Like the classical dressage style. principle doesn't do that. But apart but it from does that, in if you're truly thinking about that concept, the hind leg energy comes up and through. No, because you don't use leg and hand at the same time. That's like one of the first principles. So you yes. never do inside leg to outside hand. Oh well, I always think of it as inside hind leg to outside oh. hand. See, this is what I mean oh. because when I talk to coaches about it, yeah. they're just like, like My nothing head. comes out of their, their mouth. They're just like, that's what you do. Or like another one is um, in the classical system, you sit to the outside when you ask for the canter because the balance is supposed to be to the outside, right? But in mm -hmm. conventional system, and I love knowing about conventional system too yeah, because you've got to know. Yeah, you've got to know. Um, Especially for the coaching certificates, you have to know all mm -hmm. kinds of systems. But um, you sit to the inside. And I asked a coach, I said, why do you... Because he said, sit to the inside, and then when you go like over the Like on jump, your inside seat bone? Yeah. Okay, like like you want to change your balance to your inside leg. Yeah, not like throwing yourself over there. But, yeah, yeah, um, okay. And, but then when I was going over the jumps, um, then I sit to the outside to get the, the correct leg. And I was like, that doesn't make sense to me. Can you explain how I sit to the inside, but then sit to the outside to get the right leg over the jump? And yeah. nothing, like there was no, ex he just was like, this is just the way you what, have to do it. That's what you do. That, that's what everyone does. Okay. And so as a coach, sometimes, you know when you watch a lesson, sometimes it's really useful to know what not to do just as much as it is to go, oh, I like that, I'm going to use that in my coaching. Because yeah. every, I notice it a lot when people use these empty sort of words, mm -hmm. where they're just like, more. They're like, more what? They're just, yeah. they're just like, more. I get that in my test all the time because I'm a class And you're like, what do you, what do you, what do you mean? Or when you ask, what's cadence? They're just like, it's this, but then it's also this, and then it's that, and then I'm like, but what is it? Yeah, oh, yeah. but then it's like this, and then it's also that. I don't think I use cadence as a term very often because I find it more difficult to define. Yeah. So I use rhythm and tempo. Specific. I try and Quantitative. be really specific. Yeah, yes. yeah. Because otherwise, there's no... It's just so empty and there's room for interpretation. Yeah. You can't... Some of my clients know me well enough. Like I have one client and her and I are just like, oh, yeah. we are one human, <laughs> you know? And it was from the moment I started, I haven't even been teaching her very long, yeah. but from the absolute moment that I started teaching her, firstly, her horse is trained in a way that like I, I could see right away. And I was like, you, sir, are my jam. <laughs> and he was trained by um, the Victorian Dressless Stables. Mm -hmm. And they're my jam. Mm -hmm. And as in the VEC or no, oh, okay. Victorian dress yeah, yeah, yeah. stables. I do know what you're talking about. V D VDS? S, yeah. Sure. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Oh, oh, the two fellas, what's their names? Whatever. Oh. They ride at like, like Ant Bartlett. Yes. And um Ant and starts with a J, I think. No. No? Whatever. I'll think of it later. Me too. Whatever. That horse, I was like, ooh. Yes, yeah. sir, you got this. I got this. And she wanted to get a little handsy, and I was like, nah, 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 nah. don't wreck what they've done. Yeah. Use that like yeah. Move the hind leg. And now all I have to say is, like, I can make sounds at her. Yeah. And she'll know yeah. what I mean. And I've only been teaching her for, I don't know, four months. Yeah. And I can go, bah, 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 and she'll go, doo, 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 yeah. you know, yeah. and she'll do the job that I'm. But you've Can already explained it to her. Do you know what I mean? For the like, most part, some yeah. of it, I, I would start with a little and she'll go, okay. And then I'll go, yeah, and now a little inside leg and then send him out. And, yeah. you know, yeah. and then she just, her, we just do, really. Yeah. I've never, 
coach someone that gets me as much as she does. Sometimes my coach will say, what are you doing with that right hand? Because you know when you're at NCIS where they're supposed to be like, you're not supposed to say don't, and you're not supposed to, like you're supposed to be very specific, you're supposed to, she just, my coach sometimes goes, don't do whatever you're doing there, stop. I'm like, okay, you got it? Like, yep. I get that one a lot. Stop pulling! Because <laughs> yeah. I'll go, yeah. oops, sorry. Yeah. I am a little bit. big thing right now where I bend too much to the inside with both my horses all the time. And my coach is always like, no. 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 I do a little bit too much flexion and then a little bit too much flexion. And then it, and then my party goes, mm, we're okay. And I'm like, please do not. Oh, my horse is really bad for that. He won't. Like, he'll do it in hand. I'll be walking in places and he'll tuck his neck to it. Yeah, my horse will do a little panic. Yeah. Well. I recently just started uh, seesawing. Really? Just, and my coach is like, how about we never do that again? And then in the next lesson, I just start doing it again. Like, quite. Wow. Completely really? by accident. And she's yeah. like, I don't want to ever see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is why my horses are a little bit overbent. But it's fine. Well, I'm just, yeah, I'm just having a lot of problems uh, with that kind of stuff. And, I'm, and I feel like a lot of it, my short reins get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. Because oh I'm trying gosh, to, I'm sure. yeah. Because you're trying to make your horses go forward, and I'm trying to slow oh, my horses down. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like my reins start getting shorter, and then sometimes they get longer because I'm like, oh, I can feel them getting shorter, and oh, then yeah. I, and then it gets a little strung out, and then I'm just, like, oh, this is not working. <laughs> a really interesting thing I've learned recently is because my horses don't go forward, so I've suddenly got onto this thing about more forward in other horses, and yeah. um, and recently because I. I'd say I'm a pretty, like, nice coach. I'm like... Yeah, like a coach that if you feel like you're going to have a cry, you can stop <laughs> and go, I need a minute. And yeah. you're going to go, that's okay. No, no, but sure. And then sometimes if I like, if I don't want to push something, I'll just go, yeah, that's fine. Recently, because I just get sick of people not, you know, letting their horses go. Not, not that they're not letting them go forward, but they're not asking enough. Yeah. And very recently, I've only just started being a little bit more like demanding yeah and realizing that that's fine people won't hate you for that and they get more out of your lessons mm -hmm. much more because you cannot put a school horse over a jump if they're not going forward and mm -hmm. i'd just be like oh well she wants to jump but you know i guess we'll just do it and recently because i'm not like that as a person mm -hmm. recently i've only just started being like you're not going over that jump unless you go forward and i'm i have not screamed so much in my life like Forward. No, that's not enough. And go, just, go, go. Yeah, yeah. And I haven't done that. I haven't done that. Um, I've been coaching maybe three years, which isn't that long. Yeah. But in the last six months, I've been a little bit more. Yeah, and it actually is really good. I yeah. Think it's helping me get more out of my clients. Well, I know that I'm teaching a lesson, a vivacious lesson. Let's we'll call it a vivacious. Sure. <laughs> Just a really that's a good word yeah just a lot to it i yeah. know that that lesson is is full of luster yeah. when the dog starts freaking out <laughs> because they go 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 and the dog will be like yes they're gonna go <laughs> and, we'll so go, hop, hop, and she'll go oh yeah i am ready for this you know yeah. and she's she'll let me know when that lesson's getting hot yeah yeah and then sometimes if the lesson gets really full on and horses Think that they're gonna get naughty because she is a herding breed she can feel when animals are gonna get out of their mm -hmm. bubble mm -hmm. she goes oh! <laughs> I'm like no 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 and she goes no I gotta keep him over there <laughs> it's not allowed no mango this is an arena they won't leave it's fine <laughs> like, no, no 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 that's getting too exciting <laughs> you know and and when they get a little bit overly expressive yeah, yeah. and they can't or you know <laughs> going oh, somewhere hot and she's like uh, 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 that kid's not ready. <laughs> She's not trying to save any children, but she definitely doesn't want them to leave the herd yeah. that they're supposed to be in. This is the way it goes. It's adorable. It's so funny. Yeah. Aww. You should come and teach me one of these days. You would, you would enjoy it, I think. Mm -hmm. Because, because he's so forward. <laughs> it would give you a little bit of like a, whoa. You know, sometimes you have to go out and teach somebody who's a totally not what you used to just for kicks i like that yeah and i like um students who are really 
um, what's the word, where they come to you and they're like, so I learned this new thing, or like, so I tried this and it didn't work, I'm not really sure what do you think or whatever, but sometimes you just have students who do what you tell them to do, but sometimes you have kids who will be like, what about this, or what about that, or you know, mm -hmm. I taught it, um, one book home club on Sunday mm -hmm. and I did Poles and Greed completely out of my depth. Like I really? Poles and Greed, I can't. I don't know the distances. I'm trying oh. because that's what's holding me back from doing my level one. And they came in and they were just like, let's do a bounce. And I was like, great, that's what my lesson that's my lesson plan for the the owl or whatever. Yeah. And they just were so enthusiastic. And I was like, I'll do whatever you want me to do as long as you're enthusiastic. It helped me with my distances because I put the distance out and I was like, this is the distance for a bounce. And then I did it and I was like, this is not the distance for a bounce. And so like, no. So it was actually If you really Google the distance for a bounce, yeah. you got to shorten it by and two I was, meters. I was desperately trying to like Google it and they were talking to me and I just was like, uh, and then I just like, well, I just like, message me. Though. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I know the distances, but I couldn't, I was like, um, I couldn't remember whether it was like the landing and the takeoff. So I did the landing and the takeoff, and especially because they were ponies, they couldn't do it anyway. And I was like, I'll just shorten it a little bit. And then I was like, no, it's just one landing and takeoff. Like landing and takeoff, yeah. yeah. And so I was trying to figure it out. And then once I got it, I was like, oh, yeah, no, obviously. Yeah. But um, yeah. it took me a little bit of time, to be honest. Yeah. But Some, uh, like a wise old coach once said to me, um, if you're running jumps that are a little bit bigger, yeah. Think about the jump falling over. Yeah. And that'll be your landing takeoff. Yeah. If your horse has good bascule and knows what they're doing. Sure. And then and then you've got the other jump. Yeah, yeah. There you go, there's your bounce. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But usually it's just like two meters out, two meters. But the out. another thing that I'm getting better at is Especially as a coach, people just think you know everything. And I also think I know everything. And you have to be really cool. quick to go, actually, that's not right. Yeah. So that was my bad. And then even if you, it's really beneficial to, to explain to people, say, I decided to do this exercise with your horse, but actually because he's this way, it was the wrong choice, but mm -hmm. let's try this. such and such. But um, it's really valuable to be able to say, that was actually a mistake. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm getting better at that. <clears throat> and kids really appreciate it when you say, Yeah. Whoops, I shouldn't have done that. Like, yeah. Because it makes you a human. It makes you Yeah, human. yeah. And I'm getting better at that even in terms of my general life, like at work. Um, Being I, relatable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just to be like, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to do that. That was my fault. Everyone, that was, that, that was my bad. And then we just move on. Like, yeah. But I used to be shocking at that. Just, really? sort of just being, just like people would question me and I'd be like, no, it's the right choice. And knowing that it was, oh, oh I've done that before. But um, yeah. I, I feel, especially in the jumping, like that pony club that we did together, I built that course. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this part of the course is a long stretch. What is this good for? What is this bad for? Mm -hmm. Is your horse too fast? That's going to be a problem for you. Yeah. You know, now we've got three corners here. Who is this going to be good for? The horse that's going fast is going to have a great time through there. He's going to slow right down. Yeah. The horse that has no bendy turny, he's going to have a hard time yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's good to be able to take every aspect of that, adapt it, and go, there we go. Yeah. This is what yeah. this is what this course is going to do. This is what it's going to do for everybody. Watch yourselves. Give it a go. Yeah, because then they start to think, well, what does my horse do? Mm -hmm. Instead of you just going, right, off you go. Yeah. And then they're just like, well. You know, so, and, but I'm trying, also another thing I do is, at the end of the lesson, I'll say, your horse is such and such, instead of at the start of the lesson being, you know. Right. Yeah, and um, instead of sort of talking to the riders about it at the start. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the lesson, they're like, well, you didn't say that. You didn't say that my horse was stiff. Right. Like, otherwise I would have ridden it differently. Yeah. So. That's tough. Yeah, I try yeah. and, I try and make people think about, I think the hardest part about riding or teaching at pony clubs versus a riding school or something mm. is at a pony club, you have no idea if that's a good ride for them or not. Yeah. I know, Mango. Oh. All right, well, um, that's, we're, we're pretty much out of time. Are we? Yes. 
But thank you for joining us in this cozy cast. Oh, yeah. Um, and if you want to hit us up, you can feel free to send us a comment on Anchor. You can record an audio comment. And then I can oh. put it right into the app. And then it, like, does fancy things. Or you guys can leave comments down below if you're watching it on YouTube. Um, this is also available on, like, Spotify and every, everything. Everything. All the things. All the things. So feel free to hit us up. And thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Can I play with my guy? Yeah, of course. <laughs>